Hey guys, welcome to a Ghost Recon Wildlands video. In this one, I'm bringing you the perspective of an original Ghost Recon player. Uh, as you guys know on the channel, Ghost Recon is one of my favorite games of all time, if not the favorite. Uh, it's a tactical military shooter in its original inception. And so first off, I'd like to say it's not the critic that counts. Uh, it's the man whose face is marred with dust and blood and sweat who's in the arena, all right? So uh, I just want to say, you know, thank you to the Wildlands development team. I understand your dedication and your passion and how much work it takes to actually create something, all right? Um, so uh, real quick, through in this video, I just want to kind of run on, on some points as far as what the game is or what appears to be right now based on the trailers and on the gameplay footage that you're watching right now. And uh, and just talk about my perspective. So there's going to be a lot of critics around this. Uh, there's a lot of you know uh, criticism and and people hating on this already. Um, I understand why you know s some of it is just the uh, you know it's not what people are expecting or they want something better or whatever the case may be, but. Um, hopefully I can I can give some constructive criticism and just what I want this is just my personal opinion all right so first of all obviously the modern gaming industry is all about player choice right you can see this huge open world here you can uh, go to the objectives however you want um, and you can use vehicles motorcycles helicopters whatever it is to complete the objective so that's awesome right and if if Red Storm Entertainment in 2016 created this title, um, they might make it an open world. Uh, the original one was, um, you know, you you go out to a mission, you it would load up a map, you'd figure out those objectives, complete it, extract by helicopter, and then you'd go back to base and and uh, start the whole process over again. So what I'd like to see in Wildlands is kind of a similar process. I know that there are some bases and um, where you could be assigned a mission, go out, complete that mission, extract back to your base, and then uh, restock on ammo, supplies, uh, maybe change your plate carrier, right? Um, you know, get bandaged up, medical attention, whatever it is, even even uh, go to chow and get some get some grub, right? Get some dinner. Uh, however immersive uh, that you guys want to make it, I don't know if you're going down that down that path, but it's all about player choice. And there's a couple of things that I specifically want. All right, uh, as an original Ghost Recon player, I'd like to see a true person weapon view or a first person weapon view. And this is something that even casual players uh, want to be to have a, f a first person choice. Now I know it's possible because all you have to do is move the camera, and obviously when you zoom into your sight, uh, it goes to first person. If you're making the entire experience about player choice and options, and you know you can choose when to strike the objective, uh, the time, the weather. Um, you might wait for it to rain. You might might wait for dark. Right. You can choose whether to assault full in or have a um, a team recon and then infiltrate the camp right at nighttime have a sniper overwatch it's all about player choice so if you're giving us all those options then doesn't it make sense to give us options for first person view versus third person uh, there's a lot of arguments with third person you can look around corners uh, you can if you're prone you can look around the hill and see what's over the top right and it's exploitable right so just give us the option to have first person. I think it makes sense. Um, the second thing that I like to see is a hardcore mode. This has been suggested on GhostRecon.net numerous times. And what hardcore mo mode means is no uh, tags on the enemies, right? If you're a special operations guy, uh, as far as my knowledge, you know, there's no uh, <laughs> Google Glasses interface where you tag enemies and, and they will appear and it tracks them in real time. Uh, in your vision, right? There's nothing like that. So, when you when you presented us with a trailer about authenticity, we want to see authenticity, right? And not those little red dots. So, if there's a way to create a hardcore mode, there's a little alert system, like Metal Gear Solid style. Um, I'd like to be able to remove that, remove 
unnecessary HUD elements and just make it as clean as possible. The original Ghost Recon, you basically had your your uh, magazine and round count, which can be argued is not realistic either. Um, and then you had some threat indicator, but you could disable that. So I'd, I'd like to see that. The other thing that I'm not seeing in this is the AI seem really, really easy. Now, I'm not saying we should go back to original Ghost Recon where you have like 200 meter aimbot AK sniper fire shot where you, you get shot in the head, but what I would like to see is realistic AI. Now, this should be based on weapons, uh, so if you're using the M4, M16 series, it should have better accuracy than an AK uh, series of weapon. The other thing is, is your special operations guy, these guys are, are U.S. Army Special Forces. They have a tremendous amount of training and range time, so they should be uh, fairly more accurate than the cartel members, right? So maybe if your special operations guys are operating at, you know, 80% uh, accuracy, 90% accuracy, just based on their experience and training, the cartel members might operate at 30, you know, 20 to 30%, maybe 50% accuracy, all right? Um, so the, the AI, I'd, I'd like to see it be more realistic and them to be more accurate. And a lot of this gameplay footage, the AI, you know, they, a lot of times they don't even fire. Um, just because you're using a suppressor to infiltrate a camp does not mean that you're not going to be heard, right? Suppressors will reduce the decibel level and reduce the flash signature of, of the rifle, but it doesn't silence it, right? It's not a silencer. It doesn't make it just magically uh, go away. You still have a gunpowder explosion when the round goes off. Um, if you're not using uh, subsonic rounds, you still have that supersonic crack, right? Um, so there should be a, an area of alert, even if you're using suppressed weapons, where you, you should be able to hear um, those weapons go off and the enemy should be able to hear you, right? The other aspect of it is if you are um, in, you know, going out in the daytime, there should be a level of vision that the cartel has, the cartel members, right? Um, they're not blind, right? Uh, you're not using NVGs, and it's uh, nighttime where you know they shouldn't be able to see. You. So those those stealth dynamics aren't exactly authentic in my my opinion. So one of the things I really love, two things I'm excited about Ghost Recon Wildlands. Number one is is the vehicle uh, gameplay. You can see here it's exciting. We've never had vehicles in uh, original Ghost Recon, and to be able to chase down a high value target and extract by helicopter is absolutely awesome. So here we can see the uh, Ghost Recon Wildlands developers, and again, big thank you. Appreciate you guys and what you're doing. We've been waiting for a open world Ghost Recon game for a very, very long time, and I just want to appeal to you. Um, there is a market, an older, mature market that wants to buy this game. You got a you thirty plus guys. Uh, some of the younger crowd they like the hardcore, experienced guys that play Arma, guys that play Squad. And what I'd like to request from our community to you, the, the developers, is just give us the choice. You're giving us a choice in all these other things. Give us a choice to have first person. Give us a choice to be able to have a hardcore mode where we don't have hit markers and all that, all that other stuff. Um, where, where it's realistic uh, damage, right? Where you hit somebody in the head. And, and I think that for the most part, I've seen that in the gameplay so far. So it's. I know you're running a business and you have to appeal from, you know, the 12 year old all the way up to like you know 30 plus. And so you want to make the game accessible to uh, your entire audience. But don't neglect the uh, original players. Don't neglect the original uh, community. So very simply, you know, if you can include an option for hardcore mode and first person view or true first person view, we would really, really appreciate that. Um, let's talk about DLC and mods, right? So. You know, mods is, is uh, something that we really love about the original Ghost Recon. And what I want to pitch to you is um, Ghost Recon Original had had DLC. It had it, which they were called expansions back in the day, right? It had the original Desert Siege expansion as well as Island Thunder. And alongside of that, it also had mods. So there's a myth that you can't have mods and DLC at the same time. And obviously, as from a business standpoint, you want to be able to sell your DLC and uh, I think the fear is, is if the community creates mods, then uh, the DLC is not going to sell as, as good and all this other stuff. I don't think that's the case. Uh, original Ghost Recon had DLC. People purchased 
Desert Siege and Island Thunder, and they still made modifications. This opens up your title for just longevity. People are able to customize the Ghost Recon Wildlands experience to whatever they want. Now, from you know, one extreme is uh, basic things like actually creating the uh, uh, weapon character uniforms, right? Um, I'd like the ability to see see you uh, you know create custom faces, um, uniforms, right? If you're operating in Arctic temperatures, you know I'd like I like you to be able to put on some winter gear. If you're operating in, in desert environments, then you should be able to you know cut that down and and go uh, short sleeves and and things like that. So it's all about uh, what I want you to focus on, if you can, is the player's choice and that is so important in today's modern gaming industry when the player has a choice and he can affect the game world he really feels like he's immersed in that environment right when he can create his character when he can customize his weapon when he can customize his outfit and his gear and pick gear that's suitable for the mission all of those things uh, create satisfaction and appreciation by the player so all the more reason to give us uh, as many choices as you possibly can. Um, I really would love to see this game open for modding. Um, so on the other extreme, I mean, you can even have Ghost Recon like Wildland Star Wars, right? Or Ghost Recon Stalker, you know. These are all the things that the Arma series enjoys where um, people can create new maps, right? So maybe you have Ghost Recon Wildlands Afghanistan, right? Or, or Ghost Recon Wildlands Iraq or whatever. Whatever the modding community wants to make, um, it will actually drive your sales up because there's going to be some modification to Wildlands where, you, you know, somebody's going to want Afghanistan, right? Somebody creates an Afghanistan map. Maybe they create a campaign and series of missions. So guess what? People are going to buy your game just to experience that modification okay and it maybe it's outside of the scope of the studio maybe you're not thinking about that but uh, modifications really open up the sales uh, to the game to, to people that normally wouldn't buy it okay so that's just um, some of my opinions here I again I really appreciate what you guys are doing um, I know you're getting a lot of backlash and a lot of criticism. Not everybody, you know, you, you guys are artists, right? So when you create a piece of artwork, not everybody's going to like your art. When a musician creates music, not everybody likes your music, right? The only thing that I'm proposing is make the experience as customizable as possible. Let the player choose what kind of experience he's going to have. His weapon, his loadout. I, I think Gunsmith is coming into Ghost Recon Wildlands where you can actually customize it, add suppressors, add different uh, you know, paint uh, sheens and things like that. Um, choose, your, choose your loadout, right? choose different weapons, etc. So I'm really excited on one end, I'm not excited about hit markers or, or the uh, <laughs> the enemy tagging or anything like that. I am excited about the open world experience and the choice that the players have. I am excited about the vehicles that are going to come in. So one final note: um, what you're seeing in gameplay, you know, obviously this is like a uh, it, it's a, it's a very kind of cinematic uh, movie style uh, showcase of the game. The Ghost Freak on Wildlands experience is going to rely heavily upon the player base. All right, so if you're going to have everything from the casual player who's going to run and gun, and, and uh, pretty much the gamers of, of today have been taught by Call of Duty uh, a couple of things. One is is uh, lone wolf style attacks, where you just go out on your own, try to get as many kills as you can. And number two uh, is that you don't really have to use tactics; you just run and gun right all over the place. There's another side of the community, right? You have the Arma community, who's very uh, milsim, and and the squad community that uh, really likes to use tactics and teamwork, right? So a lot of the Ghost Recon Wildlands experience is going to be based on how the uh, players play this, all right? You can play this like Call of Duty and run gun and just you know shoot everybody, whatever the case may be. On the other end, you can use tactics. You can use teamwork. You can use you know, you know military terminology, and I could see a group of armor guys or a group of squad guys picking this up, and really uh, having a military simulation-like experience. All right, but in order to do that, we're going to need to customize 
you know, maybe enemy AI difficulty. Customize first person view only. Okay. Um, maybe um, customize the AI or the modding, allow the modding community to do it where they're more aware, where they're more alert, where they use more strategy, right? That type of thing. Um, so Ghost Freak on Wallens, I think it's the experience is going to be what you make it, but we're also kind of, uh, you know, the it's also uh, constricted by the game that the developer gives us. So the more customizations that we have, the more we're able to uh, manipulate our options in the game, the uh, I think the more enjoyable it's going to be for everybody. Anyway, this is the opinion of, a, of an original Ghost Recon or Ghost Recon Classic fan. And I hope you uh, Ubisoft developers, I hope you guys can uh, take a look at this video and really bring us the experience that we've been waiting for for, you know, like tw over 20 years now. So thank you guys for watching this. Uh, please leave your comments in the description. And I'll see you guys on the next one.